Today we're going to talk about standing out online. Standing out online. We're going to talk about why that's important um, and uh, some levers you can pull. Um, some of you are already doing some of these things. I think there's going to be nuggets for you if you have been managing your reputation for a while or certainly if you've never um, even attempted or you're not even sure what all is involved in that. There's going to be something for beginners and advanced dealers. We try to do that every time because everybody's in sort of a different place in their business. Um, so I'm a um, little bit about me. Uh, I am an innovation manager here with Ideal C Systems and Charter. So I work with dealers um, that use uh, software from all three of these companies and um, I help bring new apps and integrations. And so uh, I, I live and breathe talking with dealers. I myself was a dealer for nearly 20 years. I was an OPE and tractor dealer and uh, we had two locations and uh, we had C systems in my dealership over 10 years. And so uh, it was sort of a natural fit to, uh, to work with C systems since I had, you know, a personal list of all the things that I wanted the software to do. Um, and uh, excited to, to um, bring some of these innovations, not just to C-Systems dealers, but to dealers on um, all of these platforms. And we'll talk more about that. But the, uh, the purpose of this uh, webinar is we want to talk a little about us and more about ways that you can, you can take advantage of some tools um, that are available out there, and many of them free to stand out. So first, I think it's important to talk about well, why reviews even matter. I mean, I can tell you, um, looking around at some dealerships and just small businesses in general, talking to some small business owners, they've thrown up their hands and they've said, I don't know about the whole uh, online reviews thing. Do people even uh, take those seriously? And it seems like uh, the only people leaving reviews are the haters. Well, um, and that can be that can seem like it's the case sometimes. Uh, but I want to assure you, reviews do matter. And we're going to talk about some different ways uh, that they do and why people look at reviews. Um, but first, apart from online reviews, and before online reviews and even the internet was a thing, a business's reputation was a thing, and it still is today. Every business wants a good reputation. And our reputation precedes us unless we like literally just started up in a in a particular community or just built a store in a community that doesn't know our brand. Um, that's a separate um, challenge. And um, the one, if you're in that position, you're spinning up a new store, um, whether it's your first location or it's a new location for you, um, then, then this content really applies because people need to figure out if they want to do business with you. After all, I mean, that's what, when, when, when the whole purpose of a reputation and the way we can lever our reputation online or otherwise is it's how customers determine whether or not they want to do business with us. Everybody talks about the holy grail of marketing is word of mouth marketing. It's what our customers market for us. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's sort of the cheapest. It doesn't cost you in cost per click and it doesn't cost you in postage. Um, it does um, require an investment of time and processes and all of these things. Um, but word of mouth marketing, it's the holy grail. So how do we get it? It's not something where I just, uh, you know, reach out to an agency and, you know, and, and have them run a campaign. Um, it doesn't work like that. So, so people want to go to the go-to place to do business. They want to shop where it's easy, where people are friendly, where they're professional, where they're helpful. And if customers don't know where to shop for whatever it is they're looking for, they ask around. Um, now in this day and age, and especially over the last uh, 12 plus months with COVID, there's been a little less, you know, um, sitting around, the, you know, the, the table at the gas station up the road and sipping coffee that's starting to come back in some places thankfully um, but you know recommendations happened in places like that and across the dinner table and at the ball games and different things like that and so last year just underscored how many people went to other places to uh, get those referrals or references as to where they should do business so where do they go well google um, I mean, Google, 
Google is synonymous with search now? Uh, how would you like to be a brand that is synonymous with the action people take? You know, um, like Xerox or whatever. That would be, be amazing. We don't usually get that benefit. But Google does. So people Google and they go, lawn mowers for sale near me or Toro mowers for sale near me or Mahindra tractors for sale near me or service or parts or whatever it is. Near me searches, by the way, continue to go through the roof. And what does Google do? It shows them options. And, um, and so once they see their options, then they go, okay, well, which of these should I do business with? So we're going to talk about when customers do any of those exercises, how do we make sure they pick us? We can't guarantee they're going to pick us, but there are levers we can pull to make sure that they're going to pick us most of the time. Google reviews in particular, and we're going to talk about Google versus Yelp versus Facebook and the others and which ones matter, um, but reviews in general are social proof. They exist for our customers to tell other potential customers what it's like to do business with us. And you know whether or not it's true, people look at those and studies show time and again, people, re people that read them treat them as um, as credible as a personal reference. And so like any other part of our business, they can and they should be managed. We can manage our reputation. Um, I want to tell a quick story. I um, So we used to carry coyote tractors, and this has now been about eight years ago, so this was in my dealership. And um, it was when I was first really starting to realize we needed to do something to manage our reputation. I'm not even going to admit what our star rating was. It was pretty, just pretty low. Pretty much the only customers that had posted reviews for us were the, the pissed off ones. So uh, that wasn't cool. So uh, well, one customer was supposed to show up on a Saturday to look at a 40 horse uh, DK40 cab. Um, and so this whole package was going to be and now this is going to date it. It was going to be like $32,000. Now it would probably be like, you know, 40 K for all that stuff. But anyway, they didn't show and they didn't answer the phone. And I finally got a hold of them on Monday and they said, well, we went up the road and bought a John Deere. My husband was reading your online reviews and uh, he said, man, if just any one of those things is true, I don't think I'd want to do business with you. And it may or may not have been possible to salvage this customer. However, at that time, I think we only had like 20 reviews online. And, uh, you know, had we had the thousands of reviews that we had um, by the time we sold the dealership a couple of years ago, I'm not sure that would have happened because it would have taken them forever to read all our reviews. So um, the point is reviews matter because it will make or break sales, whether we're talking about, you know, $50 part sales, whether we're talking about 30, 40, $50,000 tractor sales. Um, they can make or break whether or not people want to do business with us. I'm here to tell you quantity matters. Most dealers I'm running across have got like 10, 20, 30 reviews, while like the local TSC, Home Depot, Lowe's, Northern Tool, they've got hundreds of reviews. And I get it, those stores have a high volume, but why do they have so many reviews? Well, they have. Um, they've got campaigns to ask for those reviews. Um, and we'll talk about some ways that you can do that. But even um, local coffee shops and restaurants that clearly do less revenue than we do, why do they get all these reviews? Um, what's the logic in that? Well, um, one, they're, they're a different business type. You know, people find, I think people like to, imagine themselves as like, you know, um, someone on Food Network, like that dude on diners driving and dives or whatever, that, you know, he goes and, and he tests food and all that. And so they like to leave reviews on, on restaurants and things. And uh, they just don't do that with like cars and mowers and trailers and, and that sort of thing. Retail, um, it's not as Classy to leave reviews on retail, I guess. I don't know. I still haven't figured that one out completely. All I know is if we want reviews, we've got to have a strategy to get them. And it is absolutely possible to go up against 
um, these, uh, certainly the mass merchants, um, and to have reviews that are uh, in quantity, just like the restaurants. So let's talk about why does quantity matter? What about the rating? Well, the rating matters, but see customers are gonna go through, when they run a search and they go, um, lawnmowers for sale near me um, or whatever, you know, how do I decide who I wanna do business with? And so they're going to, and I tried to redact, it looks like I didn't do a great job of it, but you know, don't wanna pick on anybody, but just being an example of a, of a, of a customer, you know, as an example, they're gonna look at two things. They are gonna look at the rating because the rating does give an indication. I mean, if someone's got a lot of one star reviews, they're going to have more likely to have the three and a half star rate average than they are the 4.4, 4.6. Um, now, if you don't have a lot of reviews, um, a one-star review can be devastating toward your average. So um, there's a couple of reasons why you want quantity of reviews. One, um, most of the dealers that I see that may have three or three and a half stars and 15, customer, 15 reviews, I guarantee you they have tens of thousands of customers with whom they've done business over the years. For whatever reason, we just haven't heard from them. And so um, we have an unrealistic picture of what it's like to do business at our shop most of the time. I've been to, you know, some some businesses, you know, there's a gun store up here up the road and they've they've got a really low online rating. And when I went in and, and tried to work with them, it was very obvious as to why they had a low rating. That dude did not care. Uh, but he had what I wanted, so I bought from him anyway. Um, but uh, you know, the uh the rating tells you a story, but the quantity tells a story. Like it or not, if someone was gonna look at this view, all right, I see um, from a rating standpoint, whoever's paying for that ad spot up at the top has the best average rating. However, look at the quantity. Um, it looks like P&P is as big as all three of the other dealers combined. And that may be the case and it may not be the case. But see, customers make these calculations and then they try to figure out what's the go-to place. And what it'll tell you, so this, this Google average drove me nuts. I actually went and I, I kept a spreadsheet for a while in my dealership because I wanted to improve our rating. I wanted to get to four, six, four, seven. I wanted to get out there. And, um, you know, the higher the quantity of reviews that you have, the harder it is to change that average. But it's not simple math. That's not, you know, all right, we're going to do the average of ever how many one star reviews, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to, we're going to come up with it. It's actually, there's, I don't even know all the factors that go into it, but recency of getting reviews, how recently you've got a review actually impacts that. So if it's been a while, if it's been a few months since you got a five star review and then you get a one star review, you might actually go down a tenth of a you know, a tenth of a point, you can go from a 4.4 four to a 4.3, and mathematically it doesn't make sense. Google applies a weight to recency. So it's very important that you're getting fresh reviews to uh, to keep the weight in check. If I get a one-star review, it should be, um, you know, balanced out by a five-star review and that kind of thing. And um, typically, way, way less than 10% of our customers, typically less than 5% of our customers are actually gonna have like a one-star experience. Um, it's just a couple here and there, even during busy season when mistakes are probably more likely to happen than in the off season. You know, we may have a trainee that makes a mistake. We're just busy. It's easy for balls to be dropped. So that stuff happens. So we need to make sure that it's an accurate picture that's being up there, uh, put up on Google and the directories as far as what is it like to do business with this. We want to bury one-star reviews when we get them with good reviews. And plain and simple, we want to be the the company with the best average and the highest quantity. It really matters. So which sites matter? Well, if people go to search, um, ABC, Power Equipment Reviews, whatever, they're going to see a number of different sites. Google, Facebook, Yelp, uh, BBB, Angie's List, Home Advisor, there's a bunch of them. Well, very few people are going to go to all those sites. They're gonna to go to Google, they're gonna look at the first two to three results. That's typically the way that people search. Well, who's at the top? Well, it's Google, so they're gonna put themselves at the top, unsurprisingly. 
and then Facebook will probably be in the first um, first or second actual search result. Um, so um, uh, most people, and once once people go in and start reading reviews on one of these sites, they're not going to go um, reading all the others. They, the only reason they would is they click on one and they go, oh, "There's only like two reviews here." Well, I wonder what the other ones say. Typically, they're going to if there's 10, 20, 30 reviews, they're going to find the information they're looking for, and they're going to go, okay, this is the place, or this is not the place. So we want to make sure that um, we're managing, in particular, it's a good idea to manage all of them, but the ones to focus on in particular, I'm just going to say Google and Facebook, and I'll show you some data that we were looking at. Um, for example, Google, it's 67% of the total reviews, that's, a, that's in 2020. Uh, Google got 67% of the reviews, Facebook just 7% of the reviews. So that's shifted a lot. Um, in years past, uh, Facebook had a little bit bigger market share. Yelp definitely had bigger market share. Um, and, you know, and others, there's a million little minor ones from like newspaper sites and yp.com and Foursquare and Kudzu and just a bunch of, bunch of ones that are sort of zombie sites. Uh, or they just are more focused on very local regions. But as far as of the national ones that, that that will actually rank when people search, the vast majority of the time, well, Google will be at the top. The vast majority of the time, Facebook will be in the first, you know, one, two, maybe three results, and Yelp will be somewhere in there. But Yelp is becoming, thank God, increasingly less relevant. Nobody likes Yelp. And I get dealers asking me all the time, well, can I refer... Google, uh, our customers over to, to Yelp, should I link my customers there? No, Yelp will filter them every single time. Um, I've spent money with Yelp before as a dealer. Uh, I've done a lot of research on it. There's no way, first of all, to game Yelp. And secondly, um, look at the data. It's not even worth your time. Um, and any dealer that's been managing their reputation for any amount of time knows that um, the number of reviews that you get pretty much follows this. I mean, it's definitely Google followed by a, dis a distant second, Facebook followed uh, a long way back by Yelp. Now, dealers who spend a lot of money on Facebook marketing or share a lot of memes or really engaging content, I've seen dealers have a lot more uh, reviews on Facebook. Um, I actually had a lot more reviews on Facebook than I did Google, but I was doing reputation marketing uh, a long time before um you know google really started to dominate in the review space and so google is on a huge upward trend they're gobbling up um a lot of the well they're actually acquiring other uh review sites which is part of what's going on here but the bottom line is they're exerting their monopoly force and i don't blame them so uh, facebook is relevant there still are hundreds of millions of people reading reviews on facebook but do the math um if you're not managing your reputation, a good place to start is Google. So how do we get a lot of reviews? We get the quantity matters. We know we, where we want to get the reviews, but darn it, customers aren't leaving reviews. So what are some strategies? Well, it's peak season. And I know we don't like to course correct in peak, peak season. We don't like to make changes or disturb our employees in their natural habitat. Um, we just want to perform and sell. And, and, we, and we do want to perform and sell, and we don't want to upset the apple cart or anything like that. But the best time to get reviews is right after people buy. So if you're like most equipment dealers, um, unless you're you know, extremely B2B, where your peak season is section 179 season, aka Q4, um, you're going to be doing you know, probably 50, 60, 70, 80% of your business during the spring and early summer. Um, and that's different depending on what region you're in. But you're going to do the bulk of your business during the warm season. And so the best time to get reviews is now. Um, the strategies we're going to talk about um, work year-round, but you just get a lot more reviews, of course, when you're selling more. So, so how do we get more reviews? Well, we ask customers to leave reviews. And some of you may be thinking, well, I've been doing this for years. Um, and most of the time they don't leave a review. Yeah, it's not really convenient. If someone just like, if you ask someone to go to Google and leave you a review, well, 
there's kind of a lot of steps to it. Google doesn't really make it obvious um, how you would just go in and leave a review. Cause you gotta go to the Google My Business listing and click reviews and do all these steps. And, and then, you know, I'm really familiar with it so I can do it in a couple of seconds. But the average consumer totally is not familiar with Google My Business. They don't even know what it is. And so um, what's be the best way to do this, don't just ask them in person, um, maybe let them know you're going to send them a link to leave you a review and text and or email them a, a review link. And I would say both, um, and then they can do whatever's convenient for them. Um, the the links, they're, it's, very, um, it's very simple once you've got this link, and we do this for our dealers. We can set our dealers up with links where the customer clicks it. It goes straight to Google My Business with the pop-up where they just enter in their star rating in the review and even take a picture. Um, another way is putting links in your email signatures. And it can look something like this. You know, people love doing business with small businesses. They like to root for the underdog uh, compared to the likes of Amazon, Home Depot, and that kind of thing. So appeal to that. Thanks for choosing ABC equipment. You know, please help us grow by leaving us a Google review or something like that. Um, you know, um, we know you have choices. And one of my dealers uses that. You know, uses that line with some of his review requests. We know you have choices and we're glad you chose us. I love that. Um, so uh, putting in your email signature, it's a free thing you can do. Um, the worst thing that happens is maybe you know, people only use it a few times a year, but if you, you've got this and you've pulled some other levers, um, that adds up. And especially those of you who've got 10, 20, 50, 100 employees, you know, a couple of reviews, even over just a percentage of your employees, that adds up pretty quickly too. So it could be a powerful lever for you, um, but it's a freebie in there. But another place, post sale and service surveys. We've, we do thousands of sales and service jobs. The, our smallest dealers do thousands of sales and service jobs each year. If you include the spark plugs, you include the, you know, the steel moto mix, uh, you include the trimmer and walk behind sales. You include the zero turn sales, whatever it is that you sell, apparel, safety gear, um, all of those things. And there's no reason why these people shouldn't leave you a review. You know why? Google places just as much weight on a review left by somebody who spent $2 with you and somebody who spent $200,000 with you. They have exactly the same weight on your rating. Just like their one-star reviews have exactly the same weight. So there's no reason why a $2 pissed off customer should cost you a $200,000 combine sale or whatever it is that you're selling or a big fleet. So it's a huge lever that you can pull. And, and so if you do these, um, and, um, and we have a way to do it automatically, um, you know, without bombarding people who come in every day, there's con oversending controls for that. Um, if you have 20,000 transactions in a year, what if just 1% of those customers left a review on Google? Well, how many is that? That's 200. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. Everybody's scenarios are different. I'm just saying the math makes sense. We just make it easy for the customer. Another lever would be to offer incentives to customers. And I don't mean bribe your customers. That would be unethical. What I do mean is offer them incentives to give you reviews. Don't bribe them to give you a five-star review. Just say, we wanna hear from you. Um, you know, and whether that's with your surveys or if it's just a direct review request, um, you know, have them text you a picture of the review that's left uh, if, they're, if they're going just straight to Google in exchange for some swag. Um, you know, there's, there's, this is a powerful lever, lever that can be pulled. I've seen dealers go uh, in a very short amount of time to you get 100 reviews. Um, you know, you're giving a customer a reason to take time out of their day to do something that is a little inconvenient. You can do all of this with our target CRM. Um, you can generate tons of reviews automatically because target CRM bolts onto the system and we're bolted on right now to ideal and Systems Infinity. We're going to be uh, bolted on soon to Aspen in Charter, and uh, it, a new transaction checked out 
whether that's a sales order or a work order, triggers a survey followed by a review request. And so it looks like this. Um, customer gets a text after making a purchase. Um, we ask, would you recommend us to others? And if they give a low rating, um, um, if they give a low rating, uh, then we don't send them to Google because we've got work to do. However, if they give a higher rating, we send them on. And uh, we can optionally send them to Google or, or Facebook. Uh, we've talked about kind of if you were going to pick between them, maybe do Google, but you could give them a choice. Uh, if they've already left you a Google review, they can leave you your Facebook review. And so um, it's a really powerful lever that you can pull when you can do this automatically. So if you're interested in target CRM, we can talk offline after this and, um, and talk about how this, this can work to grow your online reputation. We do have a, a happy target CRM customer. They were one of our beta testers. They helped us um, uh, with direction when, uh, from concept all the way to uh, when we launched last quarter. Um, they've gotten dozens of online reviews, um, and so they've, they, uh, one of the things that they love, among other things, they're texting with the app, they're doing some different things, but they got pretty quickly, um, you know, about 30, 30 reviews, and, um, and they really like the ability to, uh, of taking the feedback and taking problems offline and sending the happy customers on to help them get new business, and it helps turn um, certainly anytime the customer has a negative experience, turn those experiences into positive experiences. So we had some questions submitted. I had um, one, uh, one viewer says, I created a business cards with a QR code. So the customer could scan it and take them directly to the Google review link. Salesmen hand them out to customers after they've purchased something. This has proven to work well. Yes. I think QR codes are um, super underrated. Um, I think a lot of people still don't know what to do with them, but it would be a very easy, if, if certainly if your team members explain, if the customer doesn't know what the heck a QR code is, they can explain how to use it. Now, COVID, um, there's a lot of bad that came out of COVID, but one of the good things from a marketing standpoint is all the restaurants became education centers for QR codes. And so at least, at least a few people learn how to use those and, you know, they would, they use the camera on their phone and their phone uh, gives them an opportunity to, to follow that link on a browser. And um, that's a lever that could absolutely be pulled. And, and QR code uh, generators are free online. And, um, you know, and that's probably going to be something that we need to bake into target CRM. Um, if we find, I still need to see some evidence that, that the QR code thing is going to last, but it absolutely is way better than saying, Oh, oh go on Google and leave us a review. Cause it's, it's almost never going to happen if you don't give them a direct link. So I love that. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, that's all that I've got. Certainly, if you, um, for those of you who are listening on on uh, the recording, uh, we typically have quite a few folks who go back and and uh, watch the replay. This will go back in the archives. Um, so, um, if you want to watch this later, this is going to be available for you to watch later. If you think of questions, if you're going to implement some of these things, if you have an idea and you want to bounce it off of me. Um, you know, I am, I love talking reputation management, customer experience management. I think it's one of the most untapped things in this industry. It will totally help you stand out. This is the season to take care of these things. Don't wait till the off season. Um, and don't feel like it's too late. It's never too late to get started on reputation management, and reputation marketing. Um, uh, as you can see, almost everything that we talk about today is something that you can do with the tools you already have, we have a tool that can help you automate those things. And so I'm always help, happy to talk about that. Your account manager is always happy to talk about that. So certainly reach out to an account manager if you want to hear more about Target CRM. Um, but thank you so much for attending. We appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you, Tim, so much for hosting the session today. I think it's been really informational. And thank you, everyone who attended for, for listening. Um, again, I just wanted to remind you that there will be a survey at the end of the webinar when you exit. Um, please fill it out as your, your feedback is very valuable to us. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.